Um, this is uh, this is my first meetup here at Pittsburgh, uh, Philadelphia Harrisburg. I, I think the last one was back in November. Took a little little break. Uh, if anybody's been watching Quantum of Palooza, um, there is no shortage of of uh, free events for us to participate in. So. I'm not a big fan of just duplicating things. So, but if I find unique things to do, uh, unique uh, subjects that other people may not be paying attention to, uh, we'll we'll dust off the Zoom session and and uh, hold something. And today is is a good example of that um, about uh, well, 30 days ago. <laughs> uh, um, Jensen Hung, the CEO of NVIDIA at their GTC 21 conference, annual, you know, NVIDIA only uh, event. Uh, his keynote on Monday morning uh, made reference to Ku uh, Quantum, um, CU, followed by Quantum, all one, one word, I guess you could say. <clears throat> and Prior to that, about two weeks prior, actually, I saw, uh, I maintain a database on quantum technology jobs, and I saw that NVIDIA, NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA was hiring in quantum. So I was particularly dialed in on his talk to see where that was going, and sure enough, he mentioned it. So uh, as has been done in the past, last year, or whenever it was, AWS announced that they finally opened up uh, uh, you know their their, their service cloud services to quantum devices we had an event called 30 days in and it's just a, an opportunity for us as a community to figure out uh, talk about find out things share things that we've learned in these first 30 days as people start to um, tinker around with the various services. So uh, Ku Quantum is something I think it's I think it's a big deal uh, potentially eventually down the road because uh, you don't want to mess with Nvidia. It's a huge corporation as you know, uh, really at some level taking over uh, the industry um, and certainly you know they're one of the stock market darlings out there uh, and they just keep keep on producing. So their entry into quantum, as I see it, potentially, obviously it's not guaranteed, but potentially uh, will be very interesting. And um, it just kind of underscored, or at least gave me heightened awareness to, you know, the notion of putting our quantum circuits um, on a running on a GPU system or accelerator CPU, whatever you want to call it, uh, which which has been a, a, a capability in my opinion uh, that uh, really has been poo-pooed, if you will, by uh, the quantum industry, you know, quantum, um, Computing as, as I see it comes from physics. And so everything is physics based. It comes from the university laboratories among others. Uh, so it's very, you know, high, high focus. We don't want to solve, you know, researchers don't want to make an incremental improvement in anything. They want to make a dramatic improvement, uh, which is good. Uh, but when you look at business people, business people are more than happy to make a 1% a or 2% improvement in, in anything they do, uh, whatever their business is, uh, whether it's to reduce cost, improve margins, or uh, you know, increase revenue. So in my mind, and I'll get off the monologue here, people chime in, I'm just trying to get, get, get the pot stirred. But in my mind, you know, our industry uh, is really missing a lot. The recognition that the people that will pay for our, our circuits and our quantum devices uh, really, really care about a small amount of improvement. 
And so getting back to the GPUs, you know, these GPUs are just unbelievably powerful. Um, I mean, we've all seen what they, I mean, gaming is just a remarkable achievement from a technology perspective. I don't, personally, I'm not a gamer, so I don't really get too excited about the application, but the science and the physics and the compute power that drives those devices is just amazing. Uh, so anyway, you know, only a few people have access to the 50 qubit IBM machine or a 62 qubit Chinese machine, et cetera. Uh, so it could be years before people like us or even just the average business has access to a quantum computing device so that you could run your circuits. But these GPUs are just so powerful that, you know, um, they should, they, we should take a look at them. And uh, uh, people have, of course, um, but the general population or the general ecosystem really has been steered away from it as a topic of, you know, is there some usefulness in quantum simulations or quantum computing, simulated quantum computing? Might there be some applications that the everyday business can benefit from? Not everybody needs a million qubits to solve a problem. Maybe 36 qubits is enough. And if we can simulate that error free, uh, you know, there might be some application there. So thus, you know, getting the band together, getting you all here in this, uh, in this platform, um, you know, let's explore that. Uh, so Q quantum is, is may open the notion of Q quantum, at least as I see it, uh, may open a whole new realm of, of just classical computing to you that uh, may be of interest. It's, you know, these GPUs and slave devices have always been an interest of mine as a developer, as a software engineer for, you know, probably two decades, but I just haven't really gotten around to, to digging into them at any degree. So see you uh, quantum or Ku quantum uh, and to me is an opportunity to tinker around with that. Uh, but also I'm finding as I, personally, as I dig into it um, and, and thinking about, okay, how are these quantum computing devices simulated on these GPUs I, from a engineering perspective? How, how is that being done? Uh, you know, so the curiosity is driving my interest in, in, you know, digging into that. Now, what's interesting is, as any programmer should be able to tell you, uh, when you write code for a, for a procedure, an operation, for a business, uh, for a customer, a client, uh, it's been my experience, I end up knowing their business far better than they do because, uh, you know, a hat man, you know, when I was a kid, I had a hat manufacturer as a client. And, I knew more about how that hat was put together than, than he did, uh, even though he's the hat expert, because I had to write programs that were perfect or, or French bakery, um, you know, when we did parts explosion and stuff like that, you know. Um, so, so what I'm finding personally, as I dig into using a GPU device to simulate a quantum computing device, I'm finding it's actually getting me more intimate with uh, quantum computing as a whole, or, or as a as a technique, as a style, as a uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, so over the past thirty days, I actually it's been a fraction of those thirty days. I wish I had all thirty days to work on this, but it's it's been a a really interesting. Um, pathway over the past 30 days, digging into GPUs in general, and then trying to get a sense of how these GPUs can be used for uh, quantum computing simulations. So uh, I'm going to pause here. Uh, does anybody, there, there's a, a chat in here. Uh, uh, could you talk about Latif, you don't have to 
send it just to me. You can send it to everybody. Uh, talk about the vision behind Ku Quantum as you see it. Jensen talked about being able to simulate quantum circuits on a GPU. Is this another attempt to seed the developer base with tools to prepare them for? Uh, actually, you know, I'm going to put this in the in the group chat here, dude, so everybody can see it. Um, well, uh, if you check the chat, folks, I mean, this is a great question, right? Um, is NVIDIA just trying to increase sales on their GPUs? A viable strategy. Or, you know, maybe they're starting to stick, stick the toe in the water and getting a sense of, uh, well, maybe we could be positioning ourselves for QPUs uh, down the road. I, you know, obviously Jensen and I are not on the best of terms. So I don't think Jensen shouldn't even call him by his first name, but I'm a first name guy. Um, so I hadn't, you know, I, I'm just learning about the company and studying them uh, probably around 60 days only and just try to get a sense of what they're about. Um, it, it could go either way, right? In, in business, oftentimes you're, when you want to stick to your knitting and, uh, but you want to be looking 10 years out and positioning yourself. So if the market goes towards a quantum computing device being used in gaming, as an example, I'm sure NVIDIA would want to be the first one there. Um, you know, it does have that parallelism. Parallelism. Um, so I don't know. What do what does others think? Is have folks been paying attention to this story, or um, and having a, a view on it, or you know, is your first entry in there? Others, please. Michelle, please. Yeah, just go ahead and speak, and unless it gets crowded. So I, I I'm sorry. Uh, was someone else speaking? No. Oh, no, I just said I, I, oh. I've never heard of it. Uh, so it. good. Honestly, looking at the graphs, I have been following them a bit. Um, the last GTC conference, I guess, in around October 2020, I did get an opportunity to talk to an NVIDIA engineer. And I did ask about what are your views on going into quantum computing. And according to him, uh, he was not really that interested. He was saying, maybe we are going to go into software. He was not really interested in hardware. And looking at the graphs, it makes me kind of lean into the former one. Because if you look at the graphs, they are comparing it basically to one of the top tier CPUs. So an Epic 7742 and the graph is basically uh, not this one. I'm looking at the uh, Q Quantum graph uh, in their uh, developer website. So mm -hmm. it's basically a, a it's dual 64 core CPU. So basically, we're talking about 128 cores and 256 threads, and it's kind of beating it by days. Um, so which makes me believe that they are kind of leaning towards getting more sales on their DGX lineup which is basically uh, their tensor core network uh, accelerators, which they are currently using for deep learning and ML based acceleration workloads. So um, this is also one of the use cases, which this basically the same hardware can do it. And uh, honestly, they're also giving an integration with other vendors like Qiskit, Circ, and uh, there are a lot more which they have listed in which makes me believe that if they were to make their own hardware, why would they kind of have a tight integration with other vendors? Uh, that's it. And uh, yes, it's pretty interesting that they have two methods of simulating. Basically, they have their state vector method for your general use cases and a bit more, uh, uh, a bit more uh, focused method on a very certain uh, applications using their tensor network method, which makes them even extend their range of 36 qubits to 53 qubits on a DGX A100, which is an expensive piece of hardware. But still, the the the, the current generation of graphic cards, which have their RTX or so-called tensor cores, can, if not 53, can go really close to like 20 or 28, which can be done basically on your 
hardware sitting at home too. So, uh, it's so, so you mentioned uh, just to help bring people up to speed, not that I'm up to speed, but to help bring me up to speed. Um, can you articulate, do you have a sense of the, is there a difference between a GPU and a TPU, a tensor processing unit versus a graphical processing unit? Is there, is there a material difference or is that just really branding in the application? So you know? what they are basically focusing is, uh, I, I, I do not completely understand it, but uh, I, as I understand uh, GPU core is more tuned towards uh, doing graphical workload. And they are basically mar marketing the tensor cores to be very much specific towards FP16 workloads. So uh, they claim that the tensor cores, even though are present very less on the current GPUs can give a very huge performance uplifts because I got really surprised when I look at a few fig looked at a few figures at of the latest graphic cards which are like 300 teraflops 100 teraflops I was like that's that's really insane but again those numbers were for very specific workloads so they are marketing this uh, tensor core things uh, specifically for uh, uh, deep learning or ML based uh, workload. I guess someone in the chat is explaining about oh. this. Oh, yeah, wait. he has explained it pretty well. Speak so, up, whoever you are. Let me find a chat here. Well, I'm not an expert uh, in, in GPU or TPUs, but uh, this is what right. I found um, in Quora. Um, so somebody is saying that um, the, the GPU, the architecture is very, very different, it seems. Um, so maybe uh, GPUs are, um, uh, I, I, I believe that they are more general purpose in terms of uh, gaming and uh, it can do uh, those vectorized numerical uh, analysis and et cetera. But uh, the TPUs could be, they say it's a co-processor, so. Uh, yes, exactly. That's what NVIDIA is marketing in their uh, gaming GPUs too. They market these tensor cores as uh, accelerators for their so-called uh, RTX or DLSS or their um, gaming stuff, which is improving real-time ray tracing reflection. So the main thing is that these cores, they these help complement a lot of workloads. And that's what they are trying to sell it actually using these so-called DGX systems, which have lots and lots of these guys crammed into them and they are basically making kind of a environment around around um, uh, applications of their hardware which they have they are already making right now so so you know i think getting back to what their strategy is i mean it's it's obviously nobody outside of a a room probably with 20 people in it really really know for sure uh, what their strategy is, but uh, whatever their strategy is, you know, we, I feel I'd be foolish not to pay attention to what they're doing. Um, besides, you know, just the intellectual curiosity of, of, you know, just the whole GPU thing in, in general. Um, anybody else? Uh, so, so I've, I've reached out to a few people in, NVIDIA and had some direct contact with them. Now, these aren't people I have relationships with in advance, but uh, uh, I'm fine. I, I, I'm, sus my suspicion is that, uh, you know, Ku Quantum doesn't really exist yet. And I think it's, this is my opinion, um, but I think that uh, the announcement was one of those announcements to really just uh, as a ra rallying cry, even more so internally, you know, the boss said this, so let's start working on that uh, more so than externally, because there really hasn't been any chatter I've seen in the public domain about it coming out of the company. And the, the handful of individuals I've, I've pinged, some of them are in places I'm pretty confident that would know I uh, really don't have much to say about it. Uh, so I suspect that it's really, you know, just the, 
throwing the ball in the air, if you will, from NVIDIA's perspective uh, to, to get the ball rolling. But it's, it's uh, you know, there's really nothing that I've seen in the past 30 days uh, publicly other than, you know, when they announced it 30 days ago, you know, they put up that website that was active, um, gone public and it has, you know, the typical put your email address in uh, for more information. So um, everything as far as I can see is really just speculation um, at this point. I, what I've been doing, not that it's important, but, but, uh, but it's given me an opportunity to, you know, dig into, again, GPU programming and, uh, and learning about the CUDA uh, SDK. CUDA SDK is a software development kit that, uh, you know, provides the necessary tie-ins, the, the link, link-ins um, to, uh, to their GPUs. Um, you know, using a common, common, I don't want to say language, uh, but uh, a common set of, of functions or what have you, kind of like a preprocessor as I see it. Um, so I've, I've tinkered around with the C++ version. Uh, I tried getting the Python version running. It's just, I haven't got my environment set up. Uh, I know there's a Fortran version out there uh, as well. So the first thing is uh, CU Quantum will probably be, it well, is a, a SDK. And as I see it, and please anybody else chime in, as I see it, it'll be, be much like, uh, you know, Qiskit or what have you at the end of the day where, uh, you know, you've got uh, certain functions that you are, encodings uh, that you put into your traditional language and uh, it perhaps will pre-process or call a library at, at runtime. Um, so I've been digging into CUDA as a whole as an SDK. And if we get to it, I can show you, you know, some simple code, give you a sense of how CUDA works in general, uh, you know, the CUDA model because uh, I think that'll be, that'll be key here. Uh, George, uh, it, it is smoke. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, uh, you know, politicians do it as well. You know, you, you, and I do it. Uh, you float an idea, right? Uh, so you let it slip out. You're working on it. I do this. I let it slip out that I'm working on a project or thinking about a project versus doing, I'm not saying I'm doing it, but I'm thinking about a project. And it, if it sparks some conversation or some, some interest uh, that will help inform one's decision to actually move forward. So I wouldn't call that smoke, but yeah, that is smoke. Um, but uh, you know, it's very intentional what they're doing. I have no, no doubt about that. So, uh, um, but please speak in, turn on your microphones folks. Uh, I don't want to turn this into a radio show. Uh, uh, so, so. I worked with CUDA a little bit um, a few oh. years ago, but other than that, I'm not not really familiar with the way it could be used. Uh, in quantum it's, it's it's pretty much interesting. I was working with their QPy, the uh, their NumPy version of uh, the GPU version of NumPy, which is QPy, and also Rapids, which is their kind of um, AI framework. And I was getting some pretty huge speed ups. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, and yes, I feel this SDK, instead of in, in, uh, implementing a few functions, I feel this might serve just as backends or just as accelerators like we have in our Cascade Air backends. I feel this might be an alternative backend to Air looking at what they are kind of pitching in their initial pages. Yeah, um, so trying to just 
make sure there was something to talk about. Uh, so I, I threw some stuff together uh, and just as I'm learning it, I'm writing down notes. And so uh, let's talk about uh, CUDA a bit more because um, I think my guess is my sense is, and I should have put a poll together, but my, my sense is that most of us, although I do see a couple names in here that uh, I'm pretty confident are experts in GPU. You know who you are. Um, so forgive me um, for this, but uh, you know, the, let, let's just go to basics, I think, uh, to get started. And like I said, I've been a software engineer for decades and I never really needed to worry, think about GPUs. Um, but uh, let me just uh, start to walk through a little bit about what CUDA is as I'm learning it and seeing it. Um, but basically, and there is a language or terminology that they use that, that you know, if any of you go on the same journey, and I hope you do, it's not hard. The stuff's not hard. Uh, it's just, you know, nuanced. Um, and I'll show you some code. Uh, I assume we'll have some time. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, this is where you essentially, well, what CUDA is calling them kernels. So when you, the piece of code that gets run on a GPU is a kernel. And um, that's a terminology thing. And the kernel is what gets executed on the GPU. And by the way, you know, I didn't mention it earlier, or maybe I did, but I'm starting to see, okay, well, wait a minute. Uh, and I did think about this about a year or two ago, you know, learning to program a GPU is really good exercise right now for all of us in quantum, because basically, as you know, a QPU, a quantum processing unit, will in fact be a slave device. It's not going to replace your laptops, right? So, so if you if your mind has not been dialed into, you know, uh, uh, the host to device paradigm, this is a good way to, to bulk up your, your quantum skills when it comes to this. We call it a hybrid computing uh, in, in the quantum space. Uh, but uh, uh, so, you know, the model that we have with, with a GPU, a CPU and a GPU, uh, I would, I'm not saying anything new, is probably most likely the model we'll have with a, uh, with a QPU. Duh. So, so any exercise, any practice, any, you know, mindset changing we can do now will pay dividends as we get into the hybrid, more and more of the hybrid computing space of so some works done on the quantum processors and, you know, the CPU, you know, drives the show. Uh, I mean, from an applications perspective, I don't mean the, the processing unit, you know, mucking around with the protons and electrons and all that. Um, but um, uh, so when you execute a kernel, it's called launching a kernel. That's a term that gets used a lot. Um, and it's basically um, a set of threads where uh, each thread gets executed on a single CUDA core. Single CUDA core is kind of like a CPU. Uh, and so a GPU will have hundreds of CPUs. Now I hesitate because I doubt I should be calling them CPUs, but processing units, uh, individual, independent, et cetera. So you have uh, these processing units that have a very, um, I assume it's a very limited, I, I know it's a very limited instruction set um, because it's, they're, they're more um, limited in what they can do. They don't, a CPU is, you know, central processing unit has control logic and stuff like that in there that uh, a, a GPU um, uh, thread won't be, able to, won't be able to deal with. Um, I've never gotten to the microcode of a GPU, but I suspect that would be the case. So the, the instruction sets much less um, and le uh, so therefore less flexible as to what can be done in it. I, I haven't proven that to myself. That's just speculation, but I suspect that's pretty accurate. Um, but, you know, anyway, uh, it's this notion of, of the host and device, uh, you know, working together. I guess it's no longer cool to call it a host and slave. So, um, or a master slave, that's kind of 
not 21st century. So we'll call it, uh, you know, go with host and device, which, which is fine, of course. Um, uh, so it's a heterogeneous language for N NVIDIA GPUs. Um, I don't know enough if anybody has any GPU experience, I don't know enough if it, if uh, the CUDA model works on other GPUs. I hope to figure that out. Does anybody have the experience? Let, let me just ask this. Yeah, there's, there's a, actually an open standard which will work on other GPUs like the AMD Radeon. Uh, I forget I off the top of my head what that's called, but part of what's going on CL? is that NVIDIA wants to preempt that standard to get more people to use NVIDIA GPUs. Would that be OpenCL? OpenCL, that was it, yes. Man, isn't Google great? Golly. Um, yeah, so, you know, you've got all the, the business competition going on, but, you know, competition's good. And I, I myself have a desktop with an AMD Threadripper and a Radeon GPU and benchmarking it, it seems comparable to the mid-range uh, NVIDIA benchmarks that I've seen. Well, I imagine from, from a library or an SDK perspective, do, it's pretty much the same thing. You. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a GPU has its own memory, and I can show some of this stuff in, in toy code, and I, I'll get to that uh, if we have time, so you can see it. It's 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 not it can't be that much different between OpenCL and and CUDA. I mean, it's the same task. It's yeah, right. It's, memory it's, models probably the same and everything. It's yeah, it's just the API is slightly different, so. Unless you write shim code, it's not transparently portable. But the, the, the shim code really isn't that big a deal. It, it, another paradigm I'd like to put up at this point in the Python numerical ecosystem is Dask, which parallelizes over clusters or even remotely. So yeah. I, yeah, that, so so paralyzing over clusters uh, is a whole nother dimension that I, I recently, you know, moved to the front part of my brain. So correct me to simplify it, just so we're all on the same page. So imagine you had a GPU and you you've got a host, you got a um, uh, hold on, got to use the proper terminology. Yeah, you got a host and a device, and some folks, uh, the device is a GPU. So let's take you. Let's say you take four A100s, which is a GPU, really powerful GPU. So now you have uh, parallelism going not only within the GPU but across multiple GPUs. Is that what you're talking about, George? Yes, the the, the Dask framework is very general. It doesn't care whether you're, for want of a better word, processing unit that you're using is a local GPU, a TPU, or a remote CPU, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a device. It's a, yeah, so, 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 so Dask is like an abstraction, mm -hmm. which for somebody just dealing say at the NumPy Python level, allows them to write the same code that would run on their single workstation CPU or multi-core CPUs. And by putting in a, a head of everything else, a few tweaks to call Dask instead, will transparently call GPUs or remote clusters or whatever without you changing your core algorithms in, in the high level Python. So, so, you know, this whole, what I'm hearing is, so this whole infrastructure, because this is all new stuff for me. Um, so this whole infrastructure, surprise, around GPUs and exascale computing and all that, 
uh, is rather, I don't want to say mature, but pretty well established. There's lots of tools out there. So, so that part is easy. The next part is, okay, how do you take your circuit uh, and translate that into one AP, whatever the, the SDK is you use. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, saw a great video, uh, a great talk actually. Um, in fact, I've watched it twice, Dennis, <laughs> on, okay, how, how is that translated? And um, essentially, as fancy as quantum computing is, right? It's where you have, it's matrix, mul matrix multiplication, period, right? Yes. And, and so, you know, this is where I was getting at. I was like, well, that's not a surprise until it becomes so obvious it's not a surprise. So what we're really talking about here is Kizkit and, and these other Q sharp and all this is really the master, the art, the artisticness of how do you do matrix multiplication? If you figure out how to do matrix multiplication on a GPU, uh, exascale computing, or use Dask or whatever the case may be, you've got a quantum computing device simulator. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> and that, that's what GPUs were designed for in the first place is for digital signal processing and image processing which is nothing but matrix operations. You, you, you dig deep down inside this stuff, you'll find it's the same old Fortran, Blast, Linpack, and Icepack under the hood. Whether or not some of the core linear algebra functionality is implemented in C++ or Fortran, the... the uh, conceptual way you call this stuff hasn't changed since the 60s. That, that, that you're just doing matrix operations. That's what yeah. NumPy does. And NumPy is just a Python wrapper around a C++ wrapper around the low level linear algebra routines. And the G DSPs in the 80s and GPUs more recently were just designed to execute this parallel code incredibly fast. Another way to think of a GPU is Cray on a chip. Going back to my ancient mm -hmm. memories when a 40 years ago when a Cray was the quantum computer of the time and not everybody could afford one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's, what, that's what's going on in my mind is, you know, these GPUs are affordable. In fact, uh, the, I, so, so what I've done, I've gone to AWS uh, put up an EC2 instance, which is essentially gives me a computer uh, to tinker with. And um, that costs me $3 an hour. And I'll show it. That's, that's what I have running right now. So for $3 an hour, I've got what's called a Tesla uh, K80. Um, it's a NVIDIA device. It's not the most powerful thing. It's not a one A100, which I think is is the best you can get right now, but I, I just playing around with this stuff. The prices go up quite a bit, by the way, if you want to play with this, uh, you know, unless you have a real, uh, you know, project to work on, uh, I, I'm finding that the $3 an hour is more than an, an, uh, enough. And you certainly don't want to leave your instance running. That's per clock hour. Uh, but, uh, you know, for tinkering around, uh, it's, it's worth, it's, you know, worth a few bucks. Um, uh, and, but then I, I looked at, you know, the, the same GPU that I'm running on, on Amazon at $3 an hour, uh, according to Amazon, uh, 
it's $370 for this bad boy. Now it doesn't have the infrastructure that AWS has, um, but uh, you know, that's, that's a fairly reasonable number there. If you want to dabble in this space of, uh, you know, learning how to essentially write a simulator, a quantum simulator. And again, the reason you do that is, you know, you become more closely, you, you, it's, it's good for learning uh, and you'll, you'll mm -hmm. feel more confident, but uh, uh, so the device I'm running at the moment uh, is a K80, which actually I think is pretty old, um, but it's certainly good enough for learning. It's got uh, almost 5,000 cores in there. And uh, one of the things that when it comes to a GPU, hello world, it's just like quantum, right? What's the number one What's one of the problems that we have with machine learning on a quantum device is that data transfer. And lo and behold, yeah. we got the same problem with QPUs or with GPUs. Somebody's going to say something, George? Is yes, that that, that's, that's where you hit the bottleneck, in fact, that you are spending more time loading stuff in and out of the GPUs than actually computing. Same as it ever was. Same, it's sound, yeah, same as it reminds me of the song. It's um, so, so you know, as as many of us go through the quantum processing unit journey, uh, it's just a good reminder that really what we're doing is nothing new, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, while while the 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 processing device may be different, the same architectural issues have been around for a long time, uh, and so you know, learn from those who have gone before us, if I may. Um, so, uh, yeah, so let me, let me just uh, show, let's see, I don't know how to make this, this bigger. Hold on a second. Um, anybody know how to make the font larger in putty? By chance, Con control plus or something like that. George, you're putting two and two together. Yeah, not working. Uh, there we go. Hold on. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. Parents. Maybe we can read your screen. Can you um, see it all right? All right. Thanks for getting me to move on. Um, so let me just, uh, for conversation's sake, and those of you who have done this before, apologies for the simplicity, but we're all we're all learning here. At least I'm learning. I don't know about you guys. Um, where did I put that? So here. So. So here, hopefully you can see that. Yep. Uh, so this is just a, a simple C program uh, to, to um, uh, add a vector, um, add two vectors. So I'll oh go God, to- Oh my God, Malik, <laughs> Malik lives. Oh yeah. Uh, so let me just walk through, can you see the, this blue part here, is that visible in your world? Can you see this? Uh, that's almost, when you it's highlight very, it, it's visible, but. It's very vague. Um, if you, uh, hard to read, if you switch to um, black on white, it might help. Oh yeah. Da, 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 da. Colors. Um, the background, what's RGB for white? Zero, 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 right? No, that's black. That's one, black. One, one. Right. Or two, five, five, two, five, five, two, five, five, something like that. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a pre, um, pre-cooked black, white, or black on white setting? No. Or a white background setting? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I guess I could. 
I got antsy. Black. Light, light mode. Yeah. May I have some themes? Let me check. Uh, right click. Da, 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 da. All right, that's a step in the right direction. That should be a little visible, much better, a little better, much better. better. On my end, anyway. Good enough for rock and roll. Yeah. All right, so so what I've done here is I took that original C code and then just modified it for for uh, CUDA. And this is just a toy here, folks. So <clears throat> so uh, the first thing is that uh, you you need to uh, change your your memory to be um, CUDA memory. Uh, so it'll manage it uh, from there. So uh, in Malik, you, you give the size here, you're given the location and the size of blocks of memory that you wanna uh, save. So I've got A, B and C here. And then go through, just fill in the values. And then here, in C, it would just be a simple vector add, which is above here. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but here, to CUDAize it, it's the same vector add, but here uh, it's what's called the, the um, grid size and then block size. So, you know, we're clearly not going to have time to get into all of that. Maybe we could save it for another meetup if people have interest in it. We can go deeper into, you know, the, 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 uh, hardware, memory, and all that kind of model, uh, at least from the CUDA perspective. But here, so the point is to change it. So to change a memory allocation, go from malloc to just simply CUDA malloc, not much difference here. Uh, and then I can call the function. And with, with CUDA, I just can call the same function, but then I just refer to uh, the size of the grid and, or the number of blocks in the grid and then the number of uh, threads in each block. So I just put it with the, uh, I think they call them Chevron symbols. So that's a change there. And then the other change is just in the free, I wanna CUDA free the variables. So in short, here's how I allocate the space in C. I just make a little bit of CUDA change here. Uh, I change the, um, the call of the function slightly by defining the the what's called a grid size and then the number of and then the block size and then when i want to free up the variables i just use cuda free so not much change here so just the memory allocation which makes sense i want to put the memory elsewhere not keep it in the cpu ram and then when it comes to the function uh, what you do is you put in the, uh, what's that called? A double underline. There's a, a word for the double underscore here. Um, global in front of the void, which is a function definition. And then inside, I just make a slight change of uh, using the, the, the address um, of, the th of the thread. And uh, here, instead of just going in a, so if this was serial, you'd go in a loop and then you just add the two elements from each uh, uh, matrix and sum them up and put them into a third matrix, which is what this and this does, okay? Basic C code or any programmer should be able to understand that C or not. Uh, now for CUDA, uh, the, I, you get rid of the loop. The loop is kind of embedded in here, if you will. Um, and instead, you know, it's good to just put in a check to make sure you're not, uh, you know, uh, creating problems by um, identifying memory that doesn't exist. So you just put a little check right here. But essentially, so instead of this function being a loop, the function is, you know, the inside of a, of a loop instead. And then the loop is effectively created down here. So 
that's there isn't much to it. So when I run the the um, the C version, is this visible from your perspective? It's really um, no. It's, How's that? How about that? Yeah. So, so to compile the C, uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'll uh, a profile. I think it is. So, basically, I'm calling the Nvidia or CUDA. I assume it's a preprocessor that will compile it and run it. Uh oh. Oh, that's probably from before. Let me see. Well, let me just take the NVIDIA out there and I'll just put in the G. Nothing worse than trying to do something with code when people are watching you. Okay, so here I basically just compiled it in C. This is just a pure C version. And okay, so it's running. I got it running. Uh, I think it's a beta profile. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there's no profile information. So it, it, it runs. I should have gotten a profile there. Hold on a second. I don't have the NVIDIA stuff in there, so I'm not going to get much information. I have a better demonstration, I think. So let me, uh, so now I'll compile this. So hmm. All right. Real time. I know I should have done something like recorded this. Why am I not? The law of demos always happens. Yep. Yep. We've all been there. Uh, and you never. Oh. I got to put the output direct. Output. Executable. There we go. All right. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'd rather you not. I gotta get that. This is a new instance, so I don't have it finely tuned. All right, so, all right, so this is the the CUDA version, and I compiled it using um, Nvidia uh, C plus uh, plus essentially, and then I run it under Nvidia profile here, and so it'll run the code and then give you the profile results, and um, so anyway, it's 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 running. That's the main thing. Um, I've got a, another example here that's probably more interesting. So if I.
So this is a matrix multiplication, two matrices, right? I'm using CUDA, um, two matrices, uh, 1020, two square matrices, 1024 each, multiplied times one another. And uh, I think I have environmental issues going on here, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to abort. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's running. It's running. Okay, bear with me. Let me finish this thought. Matrix CUDA. Ah, uh, we'll save that for another meetup. Um. But main takeaway for today <laughs> is those of you who haven't seen such code before, it's not very difficult. And I'll bring it back up here. Essentially, you want to take any C program or uh, Python will do its own memory management. So I have to see what that looks like but you know you basically allocate uh your memory your your memory will be allocated onto the gpu device you free up the memory from that gpu device as well and then you basically change your your parallel code from going your code from your kernel from being serial to more of a a parallel device. So serial, I mean, up here, I'd be going in a loop for each element in the array, in the matrix or array, and adding them together, etc. When I go with uh, CUDA, when I go process on the GPU, I don't specify that loop anymore. That loop is effectively down here, uh, in short, with hand waving. Anyway, Anybody have anything to add? Any comments? Uh, Interesting, something to check out in the near future. Yeah, might want to stress near future too. <laughs> yeah, finish the, grading first. The point is, um, I, I'm just having you know people look over my shoulder, and that's that's why things aren't working. But. Uh, uh, it was working fine a few days ago. It could be, it's, it's something in my environment, obviously. Um, That's when what I, say, yeah, 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 yeah. It's definitely yeah. not the coder. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, but you know, this is, uh, this is one thing I, I took a shortcut when I did my, my, um, Amazon instance, uh, you know, I got it preloaded and all that sort of thing. So I, I just, I just wanted to jump to the chase and play with the, the, application code just to get a sense and a feel for it. Uh, but you know, most of the pain in my opinion is this, there's two pieces. One is just getting your environment set up. And then the second is, okay, how do you design that parallelism uh, in, in what you're doing? That's uh, uh, probably where your, your brain should be spending most of their time, most of its time. I find these setting up these instances to be very, 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 Air complex it's easy to trip over yourself yeah yeah but you know i'm sure it's just like anything you you get enough practice and insights will come and you'll do less tripping unless people are watching <laughs> yeah no i've seen i've seen demos where people said look how easy it is and then an hour later they were just trying to figure out how to how to get started you know even even experienced people get stuck sometimes with that that stuff. Yeah, well, the key is I've, I've said this for decades. You know, the, back in the old days when people really didn't know what a computer was, I always used to say, you know, computers are like an animal; they sense fear, <laughs> <laughs> and if it knows you're afraid, 
it ain't going to be pretty. So I don't mind getting bitten every once in a while. It builds character. Anyway, uh, the anyway. whole endeavor, endeavor looks looks um, looks like it's fun and worth looking into. Um, much respect for doing live coding. Oh, dude, I wasn't even coding. This is code I've already had running. So it's just uh, something changing my environment. The profiling's not working. I don't know. Whatever. It's for you. It's for everybody on this call to get out there, get an Amazon instance, three dollars an hour. So don't leave it running. Um, but uh, you know, tinker with this stuff. Some of you may have GPUs on your boxes, you know, your laptops and stuff. I do not, so I, I went that way. But uh, you know, I don't want to drone on about this topic. If there's more interest in in this kind of work, there, you know, I've made contact with a guy who. I don't know if he's still online, but a uh, uh, guy in Germany who has does excellent work. I'm trying to talk him into give a, a presentation. He's he's run uh, quantum uh, circuits on exto scale, I guess you could say, computing. I think it, I think he's run on what three A A one hundreds or five A one hundreds, and I think it's gotten somewhere around thirty six qubits worth of action i'm hoping he can give us a talk i'm still here actually yeah thanks for uh, mentioning me ah dennis so, um yeah i can actually uh, say something about it so what we did is a um quantum computer simulator on a gpu cluster and it was actually 2004 uh, 2084 gpus uh, a100 gpus actually on that cluster in the largest simulation uh, and that was a, a 42 qubit uh, simulation so, um, but that was basically Fortran code, Fortran code, which was uh, already out there for, or which we already started working on uh, over 11 years ago and um, only just recently ported uh, on GPUs because we had this collaboration with NVIDIA. And um, that just was a thing to do at the time. And actually, while I'm talking, maybe let me also throw in one comment on uh, QQuantum. So, um, well, as far as I know, uh, I, Oh, I, I haven't actually seen anything about Q Quantum yet, so any, any code or anything. Uh, we've only talked to the NVIDIA guys, and um, I think 30 days before GTC, uh, they asked us uh, what we think, uh, what would help us um, in doing these simulations on, on GPUs. And um, I, actually, uh, I actually was looking forward to learning about what actually is in Q Quantum, but uh, it turns out you also think that probably there's not much in there yet, right? That's my guess. Uh, that's from the evidence I see. Anybody would disagree with that? But yeah, let me, Dennis is uh, from a, uh, Dennis, I can't say, Julish Jul Jul in Germany. Uh, yeah, the name is Julish. Julish, um, sorry, I see. But it, it doesn't matter how you pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's, he's got papers out there, and Dennis gave a talk at GTC, the one I was referring to uh, a month ago. And I tell you what, uh, Dennis, can folks on the line, if you can give a thumbs up, maybe we can get Dennis to give a full presentation on, on his work. It's terrific. No pressure, Dennis, but hopefully he can see that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, I can do that. I mean, it's basically a talk I've given, um, I think, three times by now already. So I can, uh, if you if you let me know if I should uh, emphasize a little bit, I can also fine tune it. But um, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a problem there, actually. I think. Great. Yeah, he's got a, uh, some papers out there and, and things like that. So great. Got a commitment from him. We'll uh, we'll get you on the on the schedule um, and just reproduce. Just share what you know, man. Don't have to do any work around the, the visit here. But uh, yeah, you know, Dennis is, uh, you, your work has started 11 years ago. I don't mean you, but your your lab's work on this, the notion of, of using GPUs for uh, quantum simulation. Did I hear you right, Dennis? Uh, yeah, yeah, almost. So the, uh, the simulator, wow. the, the core code that we used, uh, that was work that started uh, 11 years ago. Um, but at that time, not on, on GPUs, obviously, because uh, there weren't many GPUs around there yet, or at least not. I, I actually, I don't know, but um, at least, okay, it didn't. It, we, we actually, uh, actually, my, my superiors at that time, they uh, used the Cray computers, and uh, 
and the code has evolved over time. And um, yeah, only I think three or four years ago, well, actually two years ago, uh, we started uh, working on GPUs to, to speed up the code. Also because so I'm working in a, in a supercomputing center and we, we got a large cluster with, uh, with those 3000 uh, and a few uh, of those A100 GPUs. And um, that was the logical step forward to start using these GPUs then for, for, for the heavy work that, that the simulator needs. Well, we'll save it for an eventual visit uh, with this group, but are you guys, are you folks continuing that work? Um, you know, okay, so you've got, you've got Hadamard Gates galore uh, running on these A100s. Do you, what, what would, what's the next research question from your lab that you could talk about? Like what's that, what's that next step uh, for improvement, advancement or whatever? Yeah, um, so, so this code is a, uh, is a universal quantum computer simulator, but um, what we are also working on are um, simulators that uh, simulate the physical realization uh, of a quantum computer. And um, so this is, of course, more like academic interest, and then we simulate smaller systems. But uh, that's ongoing work where we also work uh, collaboration with some experimental labs, um, because probably, as, as you know, those uh, the quantum computers that are out there they, they don't work perfectly uh, as, as they should, right? Um, and that's why we simulate the physical realization to learn what, what limits them or is there any fundamental uh, problem or any barrier or, or how could we improve them? And for these simulations, um, that's also what I would wish for Q Quantum to have some, as I said in the GTC talk, uh, some in-place tense operations because at the moment we also have to write all our own kernels and I would wish for QQuantum to offer some functionality, some optimized functionality uh, for such operations. So, so what we are working on uh, also in the future would be a simulation of those, or more high performance simulation of those uh, physical realizations. Well, I suspect they might be coming to you folks for that kind of stuff. You got a heck of a lot more experience than they probably do. Um, a lot more than, than who? <laughs> well, then what you guys, you know, have done, you've got a, your, your lab's got 11 years worth of experience on those sorts of things. I think they could learn a lot from you guys. Oh, uh, well, I think the experimentalists know very well what they're doing, but, <laughs> well, yeah. but, um, yeah, no, it's, it's really, it's the, the, the large scale simulation that we're after. Right. And, yeah. um, yeah, there's also um, a project going on um, where we uh, give access to uh, users uh, under a project that's that's called Unique, um, something like Ulish, uh, Unified Infrastructure for Quantum Computing, uh, where we give people access to these uh, simulators, uh, also on, on the GPU cluster that we have. Because, um, I mean, uh, as you said, you can uh, run your simulations up to, say, 30 qubits uh, on, on your laptop, or maybe uh, using the IBM service. But if you want to simulate larger circuits, then um, then you need a huge supercomputer. And that's what we also want to offer people. Wow, let us know when that when you want to let that out in the wild. Yeah, it's, it's already partly out there. So um, the project exists already. So in principle, you could uh, apply for it, but um, the service is still being developed. So um, right now, I think almost all of, uh, to my knowledge, almost all of the users are internal. So a part of the, the company that I'm working for. Well, we got to cut out soon, but we'll get, Dennis, we'll get that invite formally to you. We'll figure out a, a day and time for you to come visit. Can I ask one more question? Um, yeah, sure. You know, and I, I don't know if you have any insight to this, but my assumption is things like Kiskit, and I don't know how familiar you are with the, with the other, with companies, simulators out there, but, uh, are they probably, you know, with the simulators that, you know, you can choose to run on an actual quantum box, five qubits or run a simulator or even D-Wave for that matter. They're essentially, those simulations are essentially running on GPUs, or would you think? Um, so I think the, the Qiskit simulators, they, as far as I know, are not running on GPUs. Um, so Qiskit has a local simulator that runs on your own computer if you um, if you install it and, and call the local simulator. Uh, they also offer a simulator in the cloud, uh, which probably runs on a um, 
on a supercomputing on a cluster, I think. Um, I don't know what the, what the limitation in, in terms of the number of qubits is at the moment. Uh, it used to be um, 20, which is very, very small, right? But uh, might well be might well be much larger right now. Um, but uh, yeah, and actually, so Google also offers these uh, these functionalities, right? So these computer uh, these quantum computer simulators they they pop up everywhere at the moment, and um, that, that's why also I would think that Q quantum is not uh, simply a another Qiskit or another quantum computer simulator. Uh, I would rather hope for for some specialized kernels which uh, help in developing uh, such simulators on, on, on GPUs. We'll see wherever the market will tell them one way or another. I'm sure they'll go where the market is. Yeah, yeah probably. So, yeah, yeah, I'd be confident on that. Okay, well, we're kind of running behind, uh, well, running out of time here. And, uh, but this might be another thing for people to. I certainly have it on my radar, you know, answering that question. Okay, so what do these simulators like Qiskit and, and C, I guess C Sharp runs on a simulator. It can't run on anything else right now. But, you know, in your travels and in your adventures here in this quantum space, uh, you know, start asking those questions and, and try to dig into it. It's an interesting topic, you know, the, the usefulness, the how how the simulators are engineered and all that. I think it's pretty pretty fascinating topic that doesn't really get talked about very very much. It's kind of like it's kind of like D wave, you know. It doesn't get talked about, even though it's probably more useful than anything right now, frankly. Um, okay, well, thanks, Dennis, for chiming in on that. Uh, any comments, questions before we all go run our simulation? Vishal. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, thank you so much, Terry. Like, uh, I have been just messing around with the higher level libraries in CUDA and have not really went to lower level uh, CUDA implementations, but I'll definitely be looking out today. And just, just a tip, I guess this can also be run on Google Colab on their GPU instance, so you can run it for free instead of uh, getting an AWS instance. Colabs for free? Yes, Colab, uh, the uh, 12 GB K80 Tesla K80 is for free for 12 hours. So Google Colab, you can run this code uh, uh, in their notebook uh, environment for free. Boy, the things that these companies do to get you on their platform. <laughs> but yeah, that you know, that's what I discovered. I, I, I really, I, I heard a Colab before, but I ne it never was really something I needed to think about. So there are a few options out there. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I just went with AWS so that's, that's my home, my home platform at the moment, but yeah, there's this whole world that frankly, I hadn't spent much time on. So I think, uh, it's another world, uh, in this rabbit hole of quantum that we can dig into. So thanks for that. And okay. if anybody, you know, who has anybody wants to get some time and do some digging and just come back to the community here and, and share their experience and, and give live demonstrations like I just did, please. This is a, it's a good uh, good topic to to uh, get involved in informally. So I have a side question right. here, which you mentioned something about your machine not having a GPU. What levels of machines in general have GPUs these days? Because I thought they were much more widespread than what you just suggested. I mean, my laptop doesn't, it's got two CPUs. But uh, I, you know, I, I'm not a hardware dude, so it's not the first thing I look I, at. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Ra raise your hand if your device that you're on right now has a GPU in it. I just don't even know. I'm just wondering. Yeah. I thought they were very common. Yeah. Uh, Be Betty, if you can, <clears throat> if you if you see on your laptop, if you see a sticker that says uh, NVIDIA GeForce or NVIDIA Quadro or AMD Radeon. That means your uh, CPU has a uh, your your laptop has a GPU. Nevertheless, uh, even if you don't see a logo, your uh, integrate your processor itself has a few cores to handle. All yeah, sure. That okay. stuff. That, that part I know. So so even if you don't have a GPU, your CUDA will fall back to your CPU yes. core. So it will. Uh, oh no! It uh, so it will parallelize on your 
uh, CPU cores. It might not be as fast because GPUs have like thousands of cores, but it does fall back to your CPU cores if you don't have a CUDA or a, uh, if you don't have an NVIDIA uh, GPU. Okay, that's cool. So so we can tinker around with CUDA without having an actual GPU to, to utilize. Yes, you can. Yes. Sweet. Then there's no excuse. <laughs> I can always come up with an excuse for something. Any any laptop does have a video processor. The question is how accessible it is to some yeah. kind of programmable API. So uh, I would suggest, go, I mean, I'm not really advocating, but I would suggest right now the most uh, common one and the most uh, uh, the brand which has most implementations is nvidia they have invested a lot in their cuda uh, uh, cuda ecosystem uh, and amd's open cl side is a bit dry right now um, nvidia right now has a lot of stuff vishal we got to get you on the list to give to talk about this stuff on a, another meetup yeah. dude sure sure i'd be up Excellent. You get a quote unquote gaming laptop, you have all that power and it's accessible. I, I just want the blue light, man, the blue and red lights. So that's <laughs> oh, oh, I want a connection machine. I still think yeah. that was the coolest looking. Well, these GPUs, I don't know if you folks have followed it or, or semiconductors in general, there is a shortage if you're not aware of it. Uh, and part of that's being led, of course, by gaming. Um, but, you know, blockchain being yeah. uh, at record rates, the demand for these devices is unbelievable. Um, talking to people who sell and buy this stuff, you know, the backlogs all the way until the middle of next year on uh, on orders and stuff. So um, just another facet of this whole technology thing. Just, just a small tip, please do not buy a GPU right now. All prices are almost double. Yes. Because of these yeah. crypto miners, the the graphic cards which I was seeing for like hundred or two hundred dollars are being sold for eight hundred dollars in a lot of places. Yeah. Wait for like an year or so. Quantum will put the crypto miners out of business by cracking it and save electric. Well, it'll save electricity. Yeah. We can just you know, I mean you know, all the electricity in Denmark is going or Norway is being used for for crypto mining or whatever. And uh, we got to solve that problem. Sarita, you, are you, your hands up? Are you trying to say something or you're still voting on uh, having Vishal speak or whatever no, we put it? No, I was just trying to say that on the laptop, you can see if you have the GPU, if you right click on the bar to look at the tasks and look in the performance that shows CPU and the memory and the disk and the GPU. So you can see that GPU card is there. Thank you. I'm mad at my CPU right now. It's, it's, it's overclocking. I don't know why some, some device drivers kicking it up to 114% for like hours at a time. I think a crypto miner's got me. I don't know. <laughs> so I got, I got to get a GPU just so I can get some, some breathing space on my compute. Anyway, all right. Well, anyway, great to see everybody again. And those of you I haven't met or talked to directly, uh, uh, welcome. Hope to see you again. We'll, we'll get uh, Dennis uh, sorted out, uh, which would be a great talk. I've, I, I've seen it from GTC. It's very informative. I mean, very interesting uh, how he goes about, you know, simulating Hammercard, Hammer, H-Gates in <laughs> on his simulator he shows you the code and fortran and all that kind of cool stuff so very cool uh and uh and any of you vishal anybody else want to get together we just get a zoom link and get together all right everybody have a great day uh don't forget to check quantum Palooza. i'm sure there's four or five other events today i think uh sometime this week somewhere one of these days there's actually 14 one four events having to do with quantum free online for your enjoyment 14 in one day Whew. see ya thank you
Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.